program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media. Luke chapter 1 verse 18. Nataka tuangalia Luka sura ya kwanza. Verse number 80. Tunangalia kifungu cha themanini. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Mtoto akakua akaongezeka katika hekima naye alikuwa jangwani mpaka siku ya kufunuliwa kwake kwa Waisraeli. Isaiah 49 verse 1. Isaiah 49 the Bible says, listen, all you coastlands to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. Nisikilizeni enyi visiwa, tegeni masikio yenu. Enyi kabila za watu mulio mbali sana. Bwana ameniita tangu tumboni toka tumbo la mama yangu. Ameniita jina langu. Nae amenifanya kinywa changu kuwa kama upanga mkali katika kivuli chake, kivuli cha mkono wake. Amenisitiri. Once again verse 2, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He has hidden me. Mustaru wa pili, naya menifanya kinywa changu kukua kama upanga mkali katika kivuli cha mkono wake. Amini sitiri. Naya amenifanya kuwa mshale ulie suguliwa katika podo Lake, ameni feature. Verse 3, and he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Kaniambia, wewe umtumishu wangu Israeli, ambaye katika wewe nitatukuzwa. Now, I want to talk on the message, the end time Arrows in God's quiver. Nataka niongele kuhusu mishale za nyakati za mwisho katika podo lake mungu. We are in a very critical season. Tuwaishi nyakati ambazo ni za kweza kukuona mabo makubwa zaidi. And I believe God has been waiting for this generation. To reveal his end time strategy of a new move upon the face of the earth. Bible says in the book of Isaiah where we have read. The Lord has, he says, listen O coastland to me. And take heed, you peoples from the east or from far. The Lord has called me from the womb. The matrix of my mothers, he has made mention of me. We've been looking at the message on what the enemy uses to make sure that we are sabotaged in the ministry that God has in store for us. And through it we have already known the plan of God concerning each one of us. That God had you in mind right from your mother's womb. He made you 
alikufanya. He empowered you. Aka He made sure that you are born at a time like this. Aka kisha kwamba umezaliwa panapo majira kama haya. For you to be where you are today. Ili kwako kuwa mahali uliko sasa. It is not an accident in the eyes of God. Si ajali katika macho ya Mungu. For you to be alive now. Kwako wewe kuwa mzima leo And to be born again today. Na kuzaliwa mara ya pili hii leo. It is a pre-planned ordained plan of God. Ni mpango uliopangwa tangia awali. Because he predestined you. Maana alikupanga na akakujua awali. And this is the hour. Na huu ndio wakati wako. For you to understand the purposes to which God has called you. Kwako wewe kulielewa kusudi aliyokuitia Mungu. As I was praying the Holy Spirit told me many of us that are under the sound of my voice we are the arrows the last arrows in the quiver of God that God wants to unleash you into the nations that we may be able to establish his kingdom and they bring the, uh, the kingdom of God to a new limelight from the shadows that they will have put it in Many of you have been in some shadows. But this is the season of your revelation. I say this is the season of your revelation. The Bible says. Bible He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadows of his hand, he has heeded me. Because he made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. The days of your hiding are over. What God has been preparing you for is now on the table. Is somebody listening to me this morning? The Bible talks about John. John the Baptist. He was a mystery in his time. Because he was a, in, he was born in the house of priesthood. But never behaved like a priest. He was a man that had a unique kind of character. But he had an assignment on him. The assignment was to be the, the forerunner of Jesus. And the way he behaved it was not normal to anybody that they knew. Even his name alone was a mystery. When his father was given a a, a prophecy of his birth. He was also given the assignment of this boy. And he had a prophecy in him. But because he doubted. God made him dump. Mungu akamfanya kuwa bubu. So there was a mystery around this man. Kulikuwa na fumbo kubwa na mtu huyu. And the Bible says, Biblia inasema hivi, the boy grew. Kijana akakua. The boy grew. Alikuwa and became strong. Akawa hodari. In the spirit. Katika roho. And was in deserts. Na akawa jangwani. He was in places that not normal people live. But God had him as a, an arrow in his quiver. He was sharpening his mouth. He was putting a sword in his hand and making sure that he is prepared to be a genesis of a new dispensation. And men like that they are mysterious. Nobody could read him 
Nobody could define him. Nobody could interpret who he is. Because people misunderstood his behavior. And there are people like that in the time that we are living in. You don't even understand yourself. People don't understand you. But the Bible says the boy grew. You have been growing. God has been growing somebody. And the hour of your manifestation is now. I say the hour of your manifestation is now. When I was in the Mori Serulo office here in Mombasa, there is a young man who came to see me those days. He looked like he is confused. He was in his church, his pastor didn't understand him. Because he was behaving in a way that nobody would really interpret. And he came to my office crying. And he said to me, I believe you have a word to change my life. I didn't know him that time. But after sharing with him, in my spirit I felt that this man is a servant of God. And I prayed together with him. After a short time he left. Left Mombasa and went to Nairobi. I met him almost eight years later. He was in one of the redeemed churches in Nairobi. And he asked me, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't. And he explained to me how we met and what I said. But when I looked at him, he was not the same person I saw. There was a glory upon his life. There is a ministry that was in him. Powerful preacher. Even today, he is one of the powerful men in this nation. Nobody could interpret him. But he was a mystery in the quiver of God. Somebody is under the sound of my voice. God is saying the days of your deserts are over. Because you are now strong. In the spirit. You are strong. In the things of God. You've been trained enough. You've been prepared. Be ready for action. I say be ready for action. If you believe in shout amen. You are the quiver. I mean you are the arrow in God's quiver. You may not know what God is doing. But I want you to know that God uses prepared vessels to execute his plan on earth. And I hear the spirit say, there is an army that is about to step out of the shadows into the limelight. This is an army of fearless, energetic, unapologetic, and courageous young men. God is raising them up to overthrow the spiritual status quo in this nation and in the nations of the world. Many times we have thought that God will only raise people from the church. 
Mungu atainua watu kanisani peke yake. Oh he may raise people who are in ministry of preachers or pastors. Ama kwamba atainua wachungaji ama watu ambao wako kwenye huduma tayari. But God has in mind a people that we do not know where they are today. Lakini Mungu anawawazia watu fulani ambao sisi hata wenyewe hatuwajui. This are territorial transformers. Ha watu ni wa kugeuza maeneo with an aggressive mindset wakiwa na nia za kimapinduzi and wavering revolutionary army of god yani jeshi la mungu la kimapinduzi lisilo yumba yumba these are the people who are rising up in our time hiki ndicho kizazi kipya kinachoinuka leo hii i believe one of you is among them ninaaminia wewe ni mmoja wao i say one of you is among them nasema wewe ni mmoja wao this is not a season for cowards skiliza Haya si majira ya waoga. This is a season of giant killers. Sikiliza ni majira ya wale wenye kuangusha majitu. When God touched David, wakati Mungu alimguza Daudi, nobody knew who he was. Hakuna mtu aliyemtambua kijana huyu. But the boy was in the desert. Kijana alikuwa jangwani. Being prepared by God. Akiandaliwa na Mungu. Through the challenges and the sufferings he had to endure. Kupitia majaribu na matatizo aliyoyapita huko. But when the time was fulfilled, lakini wakati wake ulipowadia God send his servant Samuel Mungu akamtuma mtumishi wake Samuel and he said I have found a man akasema nimempata mtu I have found a man nimepata mtu who is after my heart afuatae moyo wangu may God find a man in this conference Mungu ampate mtu mahali hapa may God find a woman in this conference men and women that do not have any recognition they don't have any uh, credentials they don't have any name in the society men who don't need a pulpit to manifest what god has put in them but they are so sharp in their ministry that when it is released people will know that there is a man here wana makali wakiachiliwa watu watatambue kumbe kuna mtu hapa the days of your days are over siku za jangwa zimeisha I say the days of your deserts are over. The world is ready for you. Nations are ready for you. Your village is ready for you. Your city is ready for you. You may not have a name. But God has you in his quiver. You may not have a title, but God has you in his quiver. The hour has come and he's putting you in his bow. He's pulling it out and he's throwing you to the nations. If you are there, shout yes. Nobody knew David. Hakuna mtu aliyemjua Daudi. But when he was manifested, alipofunuliwa from the desert, toka nyikan, something happened. Kitu kikafanyika. The enemy nation knew. Yule adui taifa lijua. They knew that there's a man. Walijua kuna mtu. Even though he was a boy. Japo alikuwa kijana mdogo. But when he stepped out, alipojitokeza out of shadows kutoka vivulini something happened kitu kilifanyika i see you stepping out of that shadow naona ukiondoka kwenye vivuli you been under the shadows of men too long umekaa chini ya vivuli vya watu muda mrefu may you come out ujitokeze we want to evaluate you tunataka tukupime we want to see tunataka tuone what God has been doing in your life. You are an arrow in the quiver of God. I say you are an arrow in the quiver of God. Hear me ladies. Nobody knew Jael. Hakuna mtu alimjua Yael. Nobody ever thought that that guy 
Baal would be mentioned in the scriptures. Are you listening to me? Unanisikiliza. When other men were defeated wakati wanaume wengine walishindwa and they were not available na hawakupatikana to deal with the sisera kukabiliana na sisera child yaeli was available alipatikana i say child nasema yaeli was available alipatikana a quiver an arrow in the quiver of God. Mushale katika podo la mungu. I say an arrow. Nasema mshale. In the quiver of God. Katika podo la mungu. When Moses left Egypt. Wakati Musa litoka miswi. Nobody knew he will ever be anything. Hakuna mtu angejua angetafanyika chochote. And 40 years. Miaka rubaini. He was in the wilderness. Alikuwa nyikani. He was in the desert. Alikuwa jangwani. Running after sheep and cattle. Akifuatana na kondo na ngombe. Nobody saw anything valuable. Hamna mtu aliona kitu cha thamani. He was still in the quiver of God. Alikuwa katika podo la Mungu. Being prepared. Akiandaliwa. To unleash terror. Kuachilie vitisho. In the land of Egypt. Wengi ya Misri. They didn't know what hit them. When he stepped back Aliparudi From his shadows Kutoka kwenye kivuli Nobody understood Hakuna mtu alimwelewa But in a short while Kipunde sipunde They realized Wakatambua He is not the one we knew before Siole muse tulimjua awali Are you listening to me somebody? Wanisikia mtu wewe Soon they will say Karibuni watasema Is she the one? Ah! Is he the one? Because what he's doing? Man and air tender. It is not common. This is your season. Get out of that, that quiver now. Tell the Lord. I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out. Of the shadows. No more shadows. If you believe it, shout yeah. I say shout yeah. Yeah. Nobody knew about Paul or Saul of Tarsus. I'm not telling you about the Saul of Tarsus, but God was raising him right in the system, religious system of his day. Mungu alimficha katika mifumo za kidini za nyakati hizo. Nobody understood him. Hakuna mtu alimjua Sauli. He was zealous. Alikuwa na juhudi. He was a passion. Alikuwa na msukumo. And he didn't know who he was. Hakujua yeye ni nani. Until God appeared to him. Alipomtokea. Somebody oh. is being brought out of their religious systems. Watu wanaondolewa. I said somebody oh. is being picked out from their religious systems. We serve a strategic God. He had to have soul in the Sanhedrin to understand their mindset. He had to take him through their universities to understand what kind of people they are and their beliefs. And then God picks him up and uh, made him a vessel that nobody could gain say. Akuwe kwenye vikao vikubwa vilivya endeshe dini ya kiaudi. Hakeende kwenye chuo kiku ambacho wasomi wakubwa walisoma. Huku mungu wakimuanda kumdokeza wakatu wake. God is not ignorant of where you are. Sikiliza mungu wakosi kujua maru ulipo sasa. I say God is not ignorant of where you are. Sikiliza mungu wakosi kujua. As the world is talking about radicalism, wakati ulimwengu naonge kusu imani zire kali, and they are afraid of those radicalized young men. Na wanaogo pa wale vijana walie geuzo na imani kali. In the backsides of the desert, God is raising a radical Christian army. Katika katika jangu la mungu. Anawainua wanamugambo wakiroho 
Moriseluru says all truth is parallel. Moriseluru anasema kweli zote ziko sambamba. When you see it happening in the world, ukiona ikifanyika duniani, know that the devil saw what God is doing. Nataka ujue shetani aliona yule ambaye Mungu anafanya. And I want you to know the devil is a counterfeiter. Sikiliza shetani but the genuine revolutionary army is rising up. Sikiliza wanamugambo halisia wanajibuka. You don't behave like you are ready. Au kai kufanana na you. You don't look like you are ready. How one can you kuwa tayari we? Because where we are going, we are going to pull down strongholds. We are going to pull down gates. We are going to inhalate everything that the enemy has used to sabotage the work of God in the past few years. Tunakwenda kufagia kila kitu shetani ya medumia kueza kujumu kazi ya mungu. You came here for an impartation. Sikiliza, ulikuja mali hapa kwa mpajiko. I say again, you came here for an impartation. Nasema tena, ulikuja hapa makusudi, upajikwe. Are you ready? Je uko tayari? God has kept this general for an hour like this and today is your turning day mungu amemweka yule generali kwa wakati wa sasa siku yako ya mageuzi imewadia wewe i was part of his team at the back side i was organizing equipments and when i'm done i come and I stand with him to interpret and we went to places nilikuwa kwenye kundi lake kule mafichoni nikishapanga mitambo naja kumtafsiria on sunday morning we would go with pastor charles to go looking for equipments they were not there na asubuhi mapema jumapili tungemuita mchungaji charles akwenda kutafuta mitambo hatukukuwa na za kwetu but we we'll, we loved the push and the drive in this man lakini tulijifundisha ule msisimko na uh, ukakamavu and the prophetic word upon his life. It didn't matter the people who rejected him. Yesterday, Madubuko said, if you find a man who has it, hold on to him. And we have seen Kenya shake. Tumeona Kenya ikitikizwa. We have seen villages shaken. Tumeona mitaa ikisukwa sukwa. Towns and cities shaken. Miji midogo na mikubwa ikitikizwa. It will be a disaster. Itakuwa ni If you sat in this conference this year. Wapo kidi kwenye kongamano hili makao. Under this action. Chini ya mafuta haya. And you leave to go for mediocrity again. Uende kwako kurejelea mambo yako duni lift up your hand and say i'm receiving my impartation today napokea mpajiko wangu leo i refuse mediocrity nakataa mambo duni shout yeah 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 you are an arrow wewe ni mshale in the quiver of god katika podo la mungu kabo salama handa dabasata Lift up your two hands and just pray in tongues. Let the Holy Ghost impregnate you with something powerful. Inua sautu ombe katika luga. Roo mtakatifu akupajike mimba ya mambo maku. I say let the Holy Ghost impregnate you. Roo mtakatifu akupajike na mimba ya maku. Don't look at yourself at where you are. Usijiangalie kwa jinsi ulivyo uliko. There's something about you the world is waiting for. Kuna kitu na wewe Bwana anangoja. Ekebo sandala la hata mama leza. Oh hallelujah. 
in Jesus name katika jina la Yesu hallelujah in Jesus name katika jina la Yesu tom let's be seated for 2 minutes tafadhali tuketi dakika mbili first king chapter 20 verse 12 wafalme wa kwanza 2012 I don't have time but let's go right from verse 1 Sina muda lakini tuanzie mstari wa kwanza Kabusha barakusi ya mdhahaba Let me just read it and interpret later But I want you to follow this story with me Tufuatie Bible says now Ben Hadad the king of Syria gathered all his forces together and 32 kings were with him with horses with chariots and he went up and besieged the Samaria and made war against it then he sent messengers into the city to Ahab king of Israel and say to him that says Ben Hadad look at that verse 3 your silver and your gold are mine your loveliest wives and children are mine and the king of Israel answered and said look at that my lord O king just as you say, I and all that I have are yours. Huh? Uh -huh. Then the messengers came back and said, Thus speaks Ben Hadad, saying, Indeed, I have sent to you, saying, You shall deliver to me your silver and your gold your wives and your children. Verse 6, but I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time. And they shall search your house and the houses of your servants. And it shall be that whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put it in their hands and take it. Verse 7, so the king of Israel called all elders of the land and said, notice please and see how this man seeks trouble for he sent to me for my wives, my children, my silver and my gold and I did not deny him and all the elders and all the people say to him, do not listen or consent. Therefore, he said to the messengers of ben Hadad, tell my lord the king, all that you sent for, to but this thing, oh sorry, all that you sent for to your servants the first time, I will I said I will do but this thing I cannot do and the messengers departed and brought back word to him then Ben had had sent to him and said the gods do so to me and more also if enough dust is left of Samaria for a handful for each of the people who follow me. So the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. Verse 12. And it happened when Ben Hadad heard this message. As he and kings were drinking and the com at the command post, that he said to his servants, Get ready. 
And they got ready to attack the city of Samaria. Now, I want you to help me read verse number 13. Two, three, go. Suddenly, everybody shout, suddenly. I'm not telling you. Suddenly, a prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 14, read it. Ahab said, by whom? Why did he ask that? Because his army was weak. Because his elders were weak. Bona kaulizeo kwa sababu jeshilake daifu. He looked at his ability. It was impossible. So he asked the prophet, Is there anyone left in this country? Who is going to help? And the prophet said, By you. He said, Who will set? He said, Thus says the Lord. Everybody read that, verse 14, part B. And he said, thus says the Lord. By who? By young. Are you still here? He said, by who? Shouted. By young leaders. Then he said, who will set the battle in order? And the prophet said, you will do it. Then he mastered the young leaders of the provinces. Hallelujah. And there were 232 only. <laughs> and after them, he mastered all the other people. All the children of Israel, 7,000. You may have 7,000 cowards. Can't win a battle. Mm. So they went out at noon. Meanwhile, listen. Meanwhile, Ben Hadad and the 32 kings helping him were getting drunk at the command post. The young leaders of the provinces went out first. And Ben Haddad sent out a patrol. And they told him saying, men are coming out of Samaria. So Ben Haddad said, if they have come out for peace, take them alive. And if they have come out for war, take them alive too. Verse 19. Then, then these young leaders of the provinces went out of the city with the army which followed them. And each one killed his man. So the Syrians fled and Israel pursued them. And Ben-Hadad and the king of Syria escaped on horses with the cavalry. Listen, it took an army of untrained who look just feeble young men who the Bible says God had in mind and the prophet said those are the army that's the army that is going to refuse to remove this disgrace from this nation how many were they can I hear somebody shout? How many were they? Vijana wangapi. They were dealing with an army, a confederation of 32 kings. Walikuwa wanakabiliana na mkusanyiko wa wafalme 32. Only a few young men. Vijana wachache. Radical young men. 
walio wanamtamba wana imani kama that had a leadership quality walikuwa na uongozi ndani mwao god had already empowered them tayari mungu alikuwa amewaandaa and placed them in his quiver na amewaficha kwenye podo lake when the enemy thought they can celebrate adui alipodhani atasherekea at the last minute kwa wakati wa mwisho ha oh. God released his army. Mungu akaashilia jeshi lake. May you be counted among the number. Ukaisabike katika hesabu za Mungu. If you are here shout amen. Wapo uko hapa sema amen. A whole king of the land. Mfalme mzima wa nchi. Gave up his wives, his children, his gold, his silver, everything he said I have not denied them akapeana kila kitu mali wake zake fedha na nchi mzima akawapa do you know what the devil is doing in our time je wajua kile shetani anafanya siku zetu the kind of laughter the kind of reproach the church of jesus is being faced with today viaka aina ya kuchekelewa na kukufuru kanisa linapitia leo the kind of gimmicks the devil has raised on the pulpits aina ya serikali shetani amezindua madhabahuni we are in a season when the name of our lord is being blasphemed tunaishi nyakati jina la bwana linakufuriwa but divine plan will never be changed skiliza mpango wa mungu haubadiliki he said in the last days anasema nyakati za mwisho the mountain of the house of the lord mlima wa nyumba ya bwana shall be lifted up utathibitika above all other hills juu ya milima na vilima it doesn't matter what we have been seeing lately haijalishi vitu tumeviona karibuni from the west to the south the east the west to the north kutoka kaskazini kusini another army of young leaders is rising up kizazi kipya cha viongozi vijana kinachipuka who will say this mess must be cleared out watakesema haya machafuko lazima yafike kikomo they were in the nation walikuwa katika nchi nobody knew them hakuna mtu aliwajua they were in the nation walikuwaepo kwenye nchi they had no accolades hawakukuwa na sifa they were in the nation walikuwa kwenye nchi nobody gave them any honorary degree amna mtu alimpa vieti vya vyote vya heshima they were in the nation walikuwa kwenye but they were a mighty army lakini nilikuwa ni jeshi hodari and god said mungu akasema tell the king i'm pm farmer i have leaders nina viongozi from every province kutoka kila majimbo from every county kutoka kwa kila jimbo we have county leaders tuna viongozi wa makaunti i say we have county ah. leaders tuna viongozi wa makatuzi we have county leaders hey. Tunaviongozi wakatuzi and sang heroes. Hawa ni mashujaa, hawajaimbwa bado. Nobody has messed them up. Hakuna mtu amewaliinua. They are undefiled. Hawajanajisika. They are ready for war. Wako tayari vitani at any moment. Wakati wowote. Ayaya. When the church is giving up. Kanisa ukadi nakata tamaa. When the elders are asking, wazee wanaulizana. When the ministers who have been there are asking, wa huduma uliyekuepo wanaulizana, who will go? Ah, na hata tuendea jamani. Who will go? Na hata tuendea. We can see. Tuona the reproach. Ah, aibu kuu. We can see the reproach. Tunaweza kuona aibu hii. We scratching our tuna kuna kuna upara wetu and we are wondering will it ever happen tunashanga kweli itatokea hadi yoisema bwana and the lord sends us a word of encouragement bwana ametutumia neno la tumaini wapendo he says there is a generation anasema kuna kizazi kipya there is a generation ah, kuna kizazi kipya i say i have a generation nina kizazi kipya i have put them in my own quiver nimewaficha kwenye podo langu and i'm ready to unleash them Niko tayari kuachilia Papa we are waiting to see it happen Papa tunangoja tuone We are not departing we are not exiting until we see them because
because God has called you to be the referee. God has called you so that you can be the coach. You can tell them, do it, do it, sons, do it. Do we have young leaders? I say, do we have young leaders? Listen to me as I close. Jezebel and her have ruled the nation in all wickedness. Jezebel in her have in katika of what? The kind of atrocities that this family did is is horrendous. Aina ya mambo ya hiana familia hii ofanya but behind the desert God was raising an Elijah when he manifested Ahab didn't know what hit him at least there was a man in the, in the land who could confront the wickedness of the house of Ahab. We all know the story. God was not just raising Elijah. Mungu hakukua tuwa na mwinua Elia. He raised Elijah as a forerunner, as the spearhead. But behind the scenes, we had 7,000 prophets. God had already placed strategically Obadiah in the house of Ahab and he was the chief of staff in the house na mungu alikuwa ameandaa akaandaa mwingine alikuwa kwenye afisi ya ahabu mungu alikuwa shamuandaa god was already strategically placing people mungu alikuwa anapanga watu mali pao sawa he put jehu to be the commander of the army of ahab akamfanya yeo he took Elisha and took him to the ministry of agriculture. He raised Hazael and sent him into Syria. He also raised Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, to keep records and to be the armor bearer of Jehu when time comes. Akamine Jehona dab kuwa muandishi kueka kumbu kumbu zote na weze kukuwa beba silaha wa yehu. Lift your hand and say, I hear you, sir. Inuwe mkono sema na kusikia baba. The people, the arrows that God has put in his quiver may not be necessarily in the church. They are not pastors or deacons. Don't fight for pulpit ministry. Position yourself rightly in God. There are those who are in the marketplace. There are those who are in the police. In the army. There are those who are in the ministry of defense. There are those who are in other sectors of the economy. Teachers, doctors, and many others, pilots, and all kinds of people. God has been sharpening them. And when the fire begins to erupt, don't be shocked. And many of the people will just be 
a gap when they see what God is doing because they have been in the church for 20 years, warming their benches, doing nothing about it, and they will hear a judge in the high court is now preaching powerfully. Miracle signs and wonders are happening. A doctor in the hospital is laying hands upon the sick and miracles are happening. Wengi walio kanisani wakika kupasha viti moto mutapanua vinyo vienu mutakapaona majaji kwenye mahakama wanaubiri badala ya kutoa hukumu ya mahakamani madaktari badala ya kujunga shindano wanaweka mikono kwa wagonjwa wakipona they are emptying hospitals wanaweka mahospitali ziwe bure bila mtu kulala a reception in a hotel is casting out demons yule wa mapokezi hotelini anatoa pepo kwa wenye wanaingia hoteli god has a people hey mungu anao watu i'm here this afternoon niko hapa mchana wa leo to charge you in whatever sector you are it is time to pull down the powers of Jezebel, the powers of Ahab, the evil altars in the land at the level you are in, you are anointed. Nikuapa ni kwa kizie, wakati ni sasa, angushe ngome za Ahab na Yezebeli, kwenye maeneo amba unapatikana. When visiting Kisumu City, join Bishop Mark Kigohi at Jesus Celebration Center next to the Kisumu National Polytechnic for our Grace Hour and Sunday services. For more information, visit us online. We thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.